Hi, and welcome to lesson 9 on routing and multiplexing. We're going to begin with step 1, which is on some basic routing concepts. So what is routing? Imagine that we have some network and two nodes that are part of the network, A and B, and they wish to communicate. Maybe A wants to send some information to B. Routing is all about how do we get from A to B? How do we pick a path that connects these two uh, nodes of the network? And also to make the problem a little bit more harder, initially the nodes don't know anything about the topology of the network or about how much effort it takes to communicate from uh, one node to the next node to the next node until we reach the final destination that is B. At best, what they may know is that they have few choices. For example, A has three connections or three links coming out of it, and so does B. For concreteness, throughout this step, we're going to consider the following network that's composed of seven uh, different network nodes connected in a particular topology that you can see there. And also, we don't want to choose any path. We want to choose the best possible path, or sometimes called the shortest path. We're going to discuss what shortest means shortly. But it's picked by first collecting enough information about the network, the topology, and the various links, and then computing which path is the best or shortest. Now, what makes quantum routing different or what makes it harder? Number one is that classical networking and quantum networking are quite different. Classical networking is about forwarding packets, um, uh, or classical routing is about forwarding packets from one node to the other. Whereas in quantum networks, it's more like a distributed computation. We saw this when we are um, establishing link-level entanglement, when we are thinking about error management in terms of purification. Also, the success probability for quantum links is very, very low, and we have to contend with that. We also have another complication in the form of the limited lifetime of quantum memories. And also, it's finding the local optimum may not always lead to the global optimum. So we, f we may find what's the best link connected to A, but that doesn't tell us whether that link should be included in the full path going from A to B. Also, the path performance decline is different. So preferred path may be different as well. We have to think about purification over various distances, not just at the link level. We have to think about behavior around bottleneck links. This is connected to traffic, which we're going to talk about, and also how all of these impact the end-to-end -end latency. Now, all of these uh, are related to uh, 1G networks, which is uh, what we are going to talk about or which is what we are going to focus on in this lesson. These are the basic concepts in routing. But before we jump onto the next step, we're going to uh, discuss some basic context from classical routing to make sure that everybody's at the same level. I'm sure that for those of you that have taken classical uh, networking class, all of these concepts are, fa yeah, are familiar. So let's return to our seven node network. A network is composed of nodes and links, or when we represent it as a graph, then we can think about the nodes as vertices and the links as edges that are connecting these vertices. A path is a set of links that connects two nodes in a graph or a network. We have our node A and node B here, and this is a valid path connecting A and B. As you can see, this path is not unique. We can have other paths. For example, the original one had three links in it, this one has four, but still it gets us from A to B. A spanning tree is a very important concept that we are going to encounter over and over again. And it's defined as a subset of links in a graph or a network that connects all n nodes in the network. And it has exactly n minus one links. For our example network, this is a valid spanning tree you can see that all the vertices, all the nodes, are connected to the spanning tree. There are no isolated ones. And we can also count the number of links to find out that there's six, which is seven minus one. Again, the spanning tree is not unique. This is a different example of a spanning tree. 
Now, spanning tree is very important because it's used to pick a path between two nodes. First, we consider only a single path between any pair of nodes. Different nodes may uh, have, may see, or may create different spanning trees. This is fine, but what the end, in the end, what matters is that all nodes make consistent decisions about a common path. Uh, this is related to Perlman's spanning tree protocol, but we're not going to cover that in, in this lesson. Another important concept, which goes back to how to pick a possible path as our routing path, is the path cost. There may be multiple possible paths and multiple possible spanning trees, so how do we pick one? Well, we must establish some path cost function. For example, if every hop has identical weight or identical cost, then this uh, uh, path cost function is just the sum of the uh, hops. But in a more complex world, we have some function here represented by this f, and its argument is this vector x, which is a vector of all the hops in a chosen path. And for every path that we can find, a different cost will be uh, associated with it. Also some classical vo vocabulary around paths and routing. So routing is a background continuous process that's gathering information about the topology of the network and also about uh, various link costs. A routing table is a data structure used to hold all of this information in one place. And forwarding is making use of the information that's presented in the routing table in order to make high-speed decisions about where to send a packet next. Near-term quantum networks will not have an exact equivalent of forwarding yet. Also, as an example of what a routing table might look like, we go back to our network and a spanning tree that's rooted at the node A. And a routing table has the list of all reachable destinations that were discovered in the network. Here it's all the other uh, nodes, uh, B to G and where the packet needs to be forwarded to next in order to reach the destination. For example, if A wants to send the packet to node B, it goes into um, the routing table, looks at destination B, and what's the next hop corresponding to this destination? It's node D. So it knows that first it must um, um, forward the information to node D. And node D will have a similar, but maybe a different routing table. This covers the very basics of routing concepts. 